on behalf of the families of PFC Karina S. Lau and PFC Anthony D. D'Agostino, we would like to welcome you to this memorial service. We would welcome uh, Colonel Teeples and Command Sergeant Major Caldwell, Regimental Commander, Command Sergeant Major, and Colonel Smith, Command Sergeant Major Lane, 22nd Signal Brigade, Commander and Command Sergeant Major. Uh, Colonel Guthrie, CJTF C6, Sergeant Major Atkins, Brigade S3, Sergeant Major, and other, other dignitaries and soldiers and friends. Welcome you to this occasion. At this time, we will read our biographies. PFC Karina Lott was born on 2 January 1983 in Livingston, California. She graduated from Livingston High School with honors in 2001 and entered the Army on 8 January 2002. She later attended basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. All graduation, she attended 31 Fox Trot Switch System Operator Maintainer Advanced Individual Training at Fort Gordon, after which she graduated at the top of her class and was assigned to the 16th Signal Battalion at Fort Hood, Texas. In September of 2002, she became a member of 2nd Platoon Bravo Company as node center operator. Prior to deployment, she was assigned to SIN Team Alpha 42. On 5 April 2003, she deployed with her team to the country of Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. During the deployment, she and her team provided outstanding data and voice communications for Sabre Squadron, 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment. She is survived by her parents, Augustine and Ruth Lau, two other sisters, and two older brothers. PFC Anthony D. D'Agostino was born on November 6, 1982, in Augusta, Georgia, to Mrs. Deborah A. Granahan and Stephen A. D'Agostino. PFC D'Agostino attended basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia, on April 10, 2002. He was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 47th Infantry Company, 2nd Platoon. While on completion of basic training, he then attended advanced individual training at Fort Gordon, Georgia, where he was awarded the military occupational skill of 31 Romeo, multi-transmission system operator and maintainer. PFC D'Agostino then did a permanent change of station to Fort Hood, Texas, where he was assigned to 313 Signal Company, 57 Signal Battalion. He, quick, he was quickly welcomed to the unit and assigned his duty position of Tropo Operator Maintainer. Upon receiving orders to Operation Iraqi Freedom, he was attached to Delta Company 16th Signal Battalion, where he aided his platoon in providing outstanding communication support to the mighty 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment. PFC D'Agostino was awarded the Army Service Ribbon and National Defense Ribbon. He is survived by his parents, Deborah A. Granahan, Stephen D. D'Agostino, and his sister, Lisa D'Agostino. Please stand for the National Anthem and please remain standing for the invitation.
be they ever present comfort. As well, remember every grieving soldier who has lost a friend, that they may sense your love. Be with us as we commence this service, that we may comfort one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs>
took a flight out to the MEK compound where uh, her team was providing support to the Sabre squad. And uh, as Sergeant Meeks, her team chief, pulled them all together, I spotted her. She just had this smile, you know, that just made her to talk to me. And I, turned, I immediately turned to her and I said, uh, Hey, see that, how are you doing today? She kind of quiet, shy way, lowered her head and then looked up and smiled and said, I'm fine, first sergeant. I said, You don't talk much, do you? She said, No, first sergeant, uh, I don't. I said, Well, come here. I said, Come stand next. And I said, that's going to change, PFC. You're going to start talking to me, all right? Because I want you to have confidence in me as your first one. I want, I want to be your friend as, your, as a first one. And she said, right, first one. I said, okay, so when I come to your site, I want to be looking for you. And as the business went on, uh, I looked for PFC Live. And uh, on the second visit, I said, uh, come here, PFC Live. Yes, her sorry. I said, why don't you talk that much? She said, I'm just a PFC. I said, well, that's not a good enough excuse. She goes, I don't know what to say to my first sergeant. I don't know what to say to my platoon sergeant. I only talk to my section chief. I said, your section chief tell you that? She goes, no. I said, all right. As the visits went on, this one visit remains uh, in my mind and will ever be ingrained in my mind. And that's the visit that myself and uh, my new commander had made out to the same squadron on the north side of the airfield. And I remember going up and uh, being greeted by Sergeant Meeks, the team chief, and, you know, he said, hey, first time you're here to see, check the site. I said, no, no, no. He said, I checked the site last week. I'm just here to visit soldiers. And all of a sudden, I looked off to my right, and I see PFC Lab uh, coming outside from the barracks. And I said, uh, I said, hey, PFC Lab, how you doing? She said, fine, for sure. I said, uh, what are you doing today? She goes, oh, today's my day off. I said, oh. I said, so what are you doing? She goes, well, I heard my first sergeant was on site, and I wanted to come out and say hi to her. And that right there touched my heart, because I said, she's now breaking out of her shell. And uh, she was proud to take me in and show me how well the Sabre Squadron was taking care of her. And uh, now I know why they fought so hard to keep them up there. And, the soldiers didn't fight to come back down to Bravo, uh, but I appreciate uh, how well they take care of the soldiers. And uh, that memory will be ever most in my mind. And uh, I know right now she's looking down on us, and she'll want us to keep driving, driving on like we, uh, like we are. And I just want to say that may she fly with the angels in heaven. And one day, KFC Katrina, Karina, Satella, Lau, meet you on the high ground.
ever seen in my life goes on. And we all just pound up with each other. This is it. And where that happened was a PFC Lab was trying to turn off the digital camera and uh, hit the flash button.
when he became the 31 Romeo, the multi transmission systems operator in the His first duty station was in Fort Hood, where he was assigned to the 313 signal company as a truck operator. Upon receiving orders to operation Iraqi Freedom, he was attached to the dog pound, the dog pound where he aided his platoon in providing outstanding communication support to the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment. Most of us in here are communicators and understand signal flow. I would like to use an analogy. On Sunday, when we learned that the helicopter went down with two of our soldiers on board, it was like our shot was taking hit. We started operating in a degraded mode. When we learned the news of our fallen comrade, we mourned, we grieved. There was confusion and there was doubt. Our shot was out. Private First Class Augustino has a place in heaven. It is somewhere up there above the atmosphere. It is there that the troposphere is where the tropo bounces our signal off to get to the distant end. In his new place of duty, I know that Private D'Agostino was there ready to strengthen the signal, to strengthen the tropo signal. Rest well, Private D'Agostino, the shot is back in. Next to
you meant was once you embrace God, you open up your soul and take Him in holy and let Him guide you to a life that can't compare to our own. I think I can speak for us all when I say that God had a plan for Anthony D'Agostino to show him that God. He was without a doubt a child of God. He helped others in a way that no one else could have. He gave 110% to not only his work, he did while he was with us, but to also make sure we were taken care of. Even though he had an orthodox way of getting things done, he still made it happen. We were all close to him, that's you know, that's true. And we all feel sad that he was taken from us. But be happy for him now because he is living his new life, fixing up heaven in his own style, with drywall screws and industrial strength clothes. Try to remember him the way he was. Happy, always had a positive attitude, a good way of looking at things. For he wants to be remembered that way. He will not want us all to do and he wants all to do the same in our own lives. Because now as he watches over us, we all have a little bit of him inside of us somewhere. I was born with nothing, and I will die with nothing. The Lord gave, and now he has taken away. May his name be praised. <clears throat> Job had lost it all. He lost his servants, his animals, his children, even his physical health. You name it, he lost his loss has even made his wife turn against him. Yet, in the midst of all his sorrow, Job is still saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the midst of this tragedy, we too can bless God for the great memories that remain with us. For P.F.C. Lau, it was her great love of music and musicals. 
She was a very talented individual. But she was not flashy about it. She did things in her own little reserved way. She had thoughts about teaching music and performing in Broadway plays. She dared to dream her dream. No matter what your stage of life, dare to dream and dare to achieve your goals. But PFC D'Agostino, it was his ability to fix just about anything. If you gave him something to fix, he broke it first, and then he remade it. He was always ready and willing to assist at any time, with any task, but he would break it before he would remake it. Yes, our hearts and our spirits may be broken at this time, but God takes that brokenness and he heals it. We're told in Psalm 23 that we do not need to fear any evil in the valley of the shadow of death because God is with us. If he is willing to go that length and depth, that indicates that there is no limit to which he will go for us, and no limit to that which his children can know of his love. Any age or stage of life is a good time to remember the Creator. We are instructed in Ecclesiastes 12.1 to remember our Creator in the days of our youth. Rest assured, there is no better time than the present. While it may seem right now that it is impossible to get beyond the grief that you might feel, it is not impossible to overcome it. For with God, all things are possible. Woodrow Crow aptly stated, Death is a reality. No one has found a cure for it. Sooner or later, therefore, all people have to face death. While well, yes, that is the case, there is the hope that is there as we make our connection with our Creator. 1 Corinthians 5.8 tells us that we are confident, yes, well pleased, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Yes, even in what seems to be the darkest moment in life, there is still much hope. Yes, it is tempting to be bitter at our enemies, at death itself, even at God who allows such tragic events to happen. However, we must remember that there is one who is able to keep us and to help us beyond what we see in the present. There is a better tomorrow ahead. There is an old song of the church that says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. He's doing that even now. Yes, we saw me this our friend. But God will always hold our hands through our most difficult times as we face those times now and in the future. May God richly bless you as you continue to be everyday heroes. Our poem says, Everyday Heroes. There are all kinds of heroes who live in this world, all kinds of heroes who need. They are there in our circle of family and friends and the strangers we pass. There are heroes who somehow find strength to go along, even when they feel weary inside. And heroes whose gift is their honest emotion, the truth of the tears they have cried. There are heroes whose courage saves people and nations, who search out the same path ahead. And heroes whose job it is to quietly listen or tuck a small child into bed. There are everyday heroes who touch our hearts deeply without even knowing they do. There are heroes around us wherever we go. There's a hero right now within you. At this time, you and I have our attack matches your mark of the Pentagon. I didn't deploy out here in the 60s in the time. By the time I got here, the design had already been completely engaged in the operations. So I didn't get the opportunity to meet private battle, private jobs, and get to know them the way you all know before you came back to work. But after I did assume command of the battalion, I was able to circulate around the battlefield, and I was actually able to go out and meet them. Well as all the other 600 
these two, uh, I can tell they were great soldiers. When you would go to their site, you could see the energy and the youth in their eyes. Their duty performance was incredible. They were always excited. So I could tell that they were good soldiers. And coming to the 16th, it was their first duty site. So the Army had done well to train some professionals. But as you can hear from the remarks today and some other things that happened later on, I want to talk about that these are good people. You know, shortly after the report started coming in uh, about the helicopter going down, uh, my operations received a call from Sabre. And they asked, they said, hey, we knew that uh, Private Loud was going on in Washington. Is she okay? And then when uh, I heard about Private Sellers, who was also in that helicopter, he wasn't worried about himself, he was asking about Yeah, so. And I knew that these two were good people, that they made good friends. And you know, we can't take credit for that, that credit goes to something that there's no substitute for, and that's a good parent. And we're grieving here today, and as you know, this is being videotaped, and so forth. Mr. Mrs. Lyle, I say thank you for his one hand. And Mr. Darius I want to say thank you as well. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have been able to know two good Americans and have been able to serve them. We agree with you. We wish that we could be there in person for you, but we can't. But we're there in spirit. This time, let us stand for the benediction and for the benediction. Let us bow and see the prayer. O Lord, as we leave this place, help the sacrifice of these fine soldiers never to be forgotten. Enable us to live a life that makes the sacrifice they made well worth it. Empower us, strengthen us, and guide us to greater works than these. We may my prayer to the Lord. Amen. Specialist Whitaker, President First Sergeant. Specialist Garza, President First Sergeant. Private First Class Higdon, President First Sergeant. Private First Class Lau. Private First Class Karina Lau. Private First Class Karina Sotelo. Now, killed in action.
2 November 2003, at Illusion, Iraq. Private First Class Somerset! Private First Sergeant! Private First Class Acevedo! Present First Sergeant! Specialist Rachel! Present First Sergeant! 